Welcome to Real Talk Live. If this is your first time joining us, my name is Colanda. This is Stanley. And we are talking about white Jesus. And mm. I wish Stanley's profile was more public where I could have shared the video with you guys, but Stanley got all these public. controls on his stuff. Yeah, I don't want everybody on my page. Well, What's I couldn't thing? share your the video on Instagram because you got all these controls. So, oh yeah, it is. My my page is private on Instagram. Yeah, it needs to go. It needs to go public, especially you oh. meeting all the people on Clubhouse. It needs to go public. But that's another conversation. <laughs> so, um, I guess I'll let you since you found saw the video first. I'll let you bring everybody up to speed about what happened in the video. Well, there was a video that circulated from a service on yesterday. Uh, uh, this past Sunday of a pastor. I do not know the pastor's name. Um, but he is a pastor of a church. Um, I don't know if he's the pastor, the preacher, whatever, but um, he had everybody come to the altar and pray, and they were talking about in regards to the election. Now, mind you, you know, our the, the current person that's occupying the White House, their time is up within the next week, so they don't have that much time left. Right. So they've already certified the election. They've already, you know, we've already voted. The electors have already certified it. Then the the, uh, the House and the Congress has already certified it. So, you know, everything like that. So the pastor gets up and he tells everybody, I want you to stand in agreement with me and everybody that has um, stolen this election. I curse you. He said, I curse your um, I curse you. I curse that you'll, you'll never get elected back to office again. He was saying that um, he pretty much was cursing the people. I curse that, you with weakness. Yeah, I curse you with weakness and all Obviously. of that jazz. Exactly. And so he he's basically practicing. Well, it ain't basically. It is. He's practicing witchcraft at this point because you're using the name of God to wish ill on people because you did not get what you want to get. Yeah. Uh, or what you thought the outcome should have been. So um, it kind of, it, 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 to me, and, and I'm going to just say this, I don't care what people say, y'all know how I get, but I'm so tired of our Caucasian faith believer, <laughs> Caucasian believers in the faith when it comes to this, because it's almost like you're trying to, first of all, number one, you're going to discredit the fact that people voted. Number two, majority of the votes that really made a big turnaround was the votes in Georgia, which was really mainly a lot of uh, black voters. So because it, and it makes me feel like you're saying that black votes are illegitimate and they don't matter. Um, and number three, you, which is most importantly, you're using God, you're bringing Jesus into the fact that, you know, because this is not what you want, that all of a sudden it's some type of satanic thing going on. Right. And in the name of Jesus, you want to curse people. You want to um, put all of this on people all because you did not get your way. And um, at this point, if I could just be honest, I'm, I'm so over it. I'm so over it. Um, and it, it just sounds to me that, that the Lord only wants white people in power, not blacks or minorities. Yeah. That's just me. I am, hey mommy, <clears throat> I'm like Ty. I was um, upset by the video um, because of the audacity of people. Um, first of all, I feel like, well, now I feel like the Bible is complete. Um, no, it doesn't talk about every event in history. Mm -hmm. It doesn't talk about every event in history, but um, it's complete. Everything that the Lord wanted us to know about life and everything that was pertaining to godliness and what how we could get to heaven and salvation is 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 in the Bible. So if Jesus were to say that he came, he did, he said he came to save those that are lost. He didn't say he wanted to participate in our political um, institutions. He didn't like. I feel like if those things matter to the Lord, there will be somewhere in scripture that supported that he cares about those things as well. And I think we're putting things in his mouth, we're putting stuff in his mouth to make him say he cares about certain things and that's to meet our own selfish needs. 
and I, it was funny, I was driving on the way home this afternoon, I saw this um, Caucasian woman in this big old truck, and she had a, like a um, bumper sticker that says, pray um, for the end of abortion or something like that. And I, w- I wish I could pull her over and be like, okay, where's the abortion? I mean, where's the sticker for racism? You know, where's the sticker for poverty? Mm-hmm. Where is the sticker mm-hmm. for um, loving our neighbors? Like pray for love. And so I was very angered by the video. I just like the audacity. And see, I always think about the king side of God. Like, oh, Jesus, don't kill him. Lord, don't kill him right now. Give, give him another chance, Lord. Let him come back and confess his sins and give him some mercy, Lord. Um, because you got to be a bold somebody to use the names, the name of the Lord to wish evil upon people. Nowhere in the Bible does the Lord tell us to curse anybody. Um, he tells us when they um, bless them, when they persecute us, yeah. when they um, do all manner of evil against you for my name. Say he tells us to bless them. But I guess, and that's why I wanted to title tonight White Jesus, because this is not the go- Jesus of the gospel. And that's what I really want to know. I wish we can have some evangelicals log on. And I don't want to say it's just, it seems to be that sector of uh, Christianity. But I want to know where is the God of the gospels, the one that loves, the one that served people who didn't have as much as him, the one, you know, he didn't look like them. It's funny um, because somebody was telling me earlier today or uh, just minutes ago that they don't even believe in Jesus because it is a white man's religion. And I know Mm. because we have, and when I say we, America has like, not just America, but we've kind of like made this white Jesus the face of Christianity. And of course, everybody feels better when something looks like them. But so when you see a white Jesus with blue eyes, blonde hair, you don't necessarily see that he represents people who look like you because of how people have um, put things in his mouth and what they believe like what he feels is most important. Hey, Marcus, Jerome said this country was founded on the basis that there should be separation between church, I think he means, and state. That's what I thought too, that there should be separation of church and state. But at this point, I guess God is really concerned about the president of the United States. (laughs) Well, no, he's concerned about this president. I don't think <laughs> right. I've ever seen so many evangelicals stand behind a president as much as they've stood behind. I, this, that man name ain't even worth mentioning. The person that's currently occupying the White House. Do you know um, what it is, Stanley? Like, what is the... They feel that he's doing a lot for the church. Um, although a lot of his, a lot of things that he's put in place does protect the church he did bring prep back back in school he has taken a stand against abortion um he does not believe in uh same-sex marriage so a lot of the moral things that we as the body of christ um stand for he is leaning uh in that direction however (laughs) that Um. does not mean that he's saved or I've never heard the man confess Christ as his personal savior. I've I've never heard him confess. Now, I've heard Mike Pence do it, uh, but I've never heard this guy that currently operates the White House, uh, occupies the White House. I've never heard him. Yeah, yeah, he's not even worth, I'm telling you, he's not even worth mentioning his name. But I've never heard him confess that Jesus Christ is his Lord and personal savior. But they're using him to push their agenda. And this is what people have to understand. They always say this country was founded on God. This country was founded on God. This country was founded on God. That's not completely true. You, because this is my thing. You founded a country on God, but you stole the land. You know, you founded a country on God, but the main people that helped build this country was was African slaves that you stole from another continent and brought them over here and put them to work for free. But we founded it on God. We founded this on God, but yet. You know, we, we go to war, we're killing people, you know, we're doing all kinds of stuff. We have discrimination here, you know, we, and even though the Civil Rights Act, which is really not a law, it's just an act that protects us for a certain amount of time, you know, is in place. But we say we're founded on God. Um, America is not a quote unquote Christian nation because if that's the case, then everybody would have to be a Christian here 
versus like if you go overseas, those are Muslim nations and they'll kill you if you're not a Muslim. Right. So we're not a Christian nation because we have so many, America is a melting pot. We have so many different cultures here, so many different religions here, so many different thoughts here. So this is not a theocracy. And what we as the church have to understand is because this is not a theocracy, we don't have as much, con we can have influence, but we cannot control the way that this government operates. That's why people vote, people make choices, people make decisions. You know, some things we, we agree with, some things we don't. The only thing we can do is just pray that whatever we need gets out of the situation. But it's not our job to try to convince, try to turn, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, you can't do that. And at the end of the day, stop making the president the pastor. He's not the pastor. He's just the president. He has to service all people. And just because it seems like he's benefiting you, rest assured, that does not mean that he agrees with you as well. You know, a lot of times they say, like, I think it was one of his staff members that said, they say he mocks evangelicals all the time in the White House, behind the camera. He does, in front of the camera, yeah, he act like, you know, he cool with them, but behind the camera, he can't stand y'all. He think y'all are delusional. And, and y'all keep going on I with think this. he's shown that he's not loyal, that he doesn't have At all. Love. So I feel like it's it's very ignorant of the, of evangelicals to think that he would be on their side when people he has picked to work with him, he has uh, been disloyal to him. He's uh, he's fired mm -hmm. him. He talked about him. Um, the very person you decided to run with is now like you know what I can't stand for this. This can't is can't take it no more. So, and I don't, because he's killing his career. Because what if Mike Pitts want to run for president one day? He'll yeah. never win because people are going to associate him with this. Yeah. And yeah, it, it's it's to my point, and this is my thing with, with evangelicals. And I feel like this, and forgive me if I'm wrong, inbox me, whatever. I don't you care. You can say what you want to say. We're not going to put this okay, in the radio. <laughs> okay, perfect. I just feel like with, with evangelicals, it's always this. Whenever it's somebody black or in color that reach a high position, they automatically assume that it's some type of demonic thing <laughs> connected to it. Yeah. But as long as the person is white, oh, that's who God wants in office. Like with Barack Obama. Now, Barack Obama confessed that he was a Christian. We saw that he went to church. He had a pastor and all of that. But yet they, he's demonic. And, and this, is, this is a force of evil. No, you just didn't want to sit up under a black man. And that's really what it is. And they do it all day, even in our churches. Most white pastors will make a black person feel like the way that we worship is out of ignorance and this and that. And they have the real way of worshiping. They have the real way of doing things and, and it's their way or whoever's not doing it their way is ignorance. And we got to start calling this stuff out. And I'm so tired of it because, you know, from, from a person growing up in church, I used to think that I used to go to a white church and be like, oh, we're doing it the wrong way. But the Lord had to show me that's their style of worship. Everybody got multiple styles. That, you know, as long as you worship in God and spirit and truth, it don't matter how you worship. Yeah. Uh, Elder Wilson said Trump has made people feel that it's okay to preach and still be racist. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Todd says evangelicals are modern day Pharisees. Oh, I had to sneeze. Mm -mm. Get mine. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah, I feel like uh, I felt that. You're so silly. And so that's what we yeah. mean by that's what we mean by white Jesus is that they have a um an idea of Jesus that really only serves one agenda, uh, one race of people serves their agenda only. But that's not the thank you, Todd. That's not the Jesus of the gospel. I heard a pastor mm -hmm. say, um, you know, the Bible kind of hints at what Jesus may look like, but Jesus is more likely to look like the people who you don't want to sit by in the airport because of the 9-11 bombing than the white man with blonde hair and blue eyes. Exactly. They gonna be, Well, I don't even know if they're going to make it to heaven, but some of these people are going to be so like, when they get to heaven and see what it's like, because they just have this idea of what he looks like and the kind of company that he um, decides. I almost told on this church, but I ain't going to do it. Holy Ghost won't let me do it. But it's a church on the south side of Jacksonville. Um, was supposed to be a multicultural church. And then a person I know was worshiping there. And the, um, the white leaders 
and the first lady got got onto the, the the black woman about the way she was worshiping it was worship service specifically for worship and got on to her about being disruptive because of how she was worshiping and they were and, like a pentecostal church no it was just like a multicultural church but it's worship night all we came here to do is worship and I think had they known her story, they would have understand why she, why she was so emphatic in her worship. Um, but she left the church because of that. I don't, I don't rubbed a lot that. of the black people the wrong way um, because it's worship now. How are you gonna tell me I'm being disruptive? Turn the mic up, then you know, like as long as I'm not up here like running on the stage, you know, doing cartwheels. But it's worship service specifically that's all y'all came here to do you're not even preaching you came here specifically so we can pray and worship and you get mad because i'm worshiping and it doesn't look like how you look like and i think how you work but then you want to say we ignorant because we shout and we dance and all this you know that was the time when they they told us as black people we were ignorant for speaking in tongues because that was a dead thing that went on with the apostles and all of that and it wasn't relevant but now you saw that it started, you know, growing our churches and we allowed the Holy Ghost to come in. Yeah, and right. to, oh, it's okay to speak in tongues now. Like this has been going on for years and yeah. years and years. And it's time to call this stuff out. And what, what kind of aggravates me is the very people that you condemn with uh, and uh, are mainly black. White people can easily have a multicultural church. Black people cannot. Black people left the black church to go help a white pastor build a ministry. And it's hurtful because a lot of these pastors that, that these black people help build their ministries, they turn around and support things like racism and all this kind of stuff and don't even try to address it. You don't even try to make, it's like you totally disregard how your, how your congregation feels about this. And if you're saying that God called your ministry to, internationally to all people, <laughs> you need to be able to make sure that your ministry relates to, to all, all people. All people. I know a, I know a black woman now and God knows I hope she is watching because when I say sis has not even been brainwashed but sis has been whitewashed like I have people who oh I know people who are like who is this person we have never known her to speak like this talk like this but when I say a big time Trump supporter like out of nowhere don't want you to wear your mask um don't you know we don't need to be quarantined and doing how like big time trump supporter all of a sudden but goes to a white church and i'm not saying anything, there's anything wrong with the white church but i'm saying when you do attend a ministry that does not you know it's like they kind of see you as a believer but they don't see your black skin so they're not yeah, they really yeah. catering to you as a true individual it's I, don't, I mean, I don't really like people say I'm not black first. I'm a Christian first. I'm kingdom first. I don't really know what any of that, what that means because I think God created your skin tone with intention. So you can't tell mm -hmm. me that you're a Christian first. You are an African-American Christian, I'm, you know, or whatever. You're a white Christian, you are, or whatever. Um, your skin, your race was created with intention. Um, but when I say sis, it's been whitewashed. Like, And it's the sad thing about that. But when she was so powerful, Stanley, when I say she was so powerful, I'm like speaking in tongues on her wedding day, like got a powerful testimony of healing. But now you be like, who is this? Yep. Sis has been bewitched by this white Jesus. It's so sad because a lot of people don't realize this. Christianity did not start by white people. Teach us, Stanley. They were not white. If you go look in the the Bible times and descriptions of Bible people, Israel, Egypt, all of that, uh, Ethiopia, not they're not white people. The, the Bible talks about a story, Jerusalem, they were not white people. Go look at the nationalities, go look at their skin tones and things of that nature. The first major big Christian movement was pushed by Ethiopians. The oldest Christian Bible in the world is the Ethiopian Christian Bible which is in Africa. So Africa, so Christianity was not a white thing. White people took it, some white people took it and manipulated it into right. what they wanted it to be. But it was, it, was, it was mainly catered to minority people. You know what I'm saying? If, if we were to see Jesus in the flesh like he was back then, it would shock a lot of us how he, he was. Would. He wasn't white. He was, he was not white. And then this is how I know Christianity was not started by white people. 
because Paul and the apostles had to go to different nations, Corinth and, and, and Greece and Rome, where white people had, and had to tell them about Christ. But in, where, where it started at, in Jerusalem, there was not a lot of white people that was, teach it wasn't mainly, it wasn't a white relate, religion. Why so, did they have to go to Greece and teach exactly. them about Jesus if it started with them? If it started with them, thank you. Why did they have to go to Rome? Why did they have to go to, to Colossians? And the Bible Colossi, tells us all that. That, it, that, he, that he extends the invitation to first, you know, to, to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. And to the Gentiles. If, you, if you've ever seen a Jewish person, Maybe people have never seen a Jewish person. I used to, this lady at my job was a vice president. She was a Jewish person. She does not look white and she doesn't look black, but you can tell she is something different because of her hair. That's how I can tell. Her hair is not mm -hmm. like silky blonde, but it's, all, it's also not as ethnic as mine. They do not look white. They don't. You have some, you have Jews that's my complexion. Yeah. Um, I'm telling you, it, they're not white. And that's, and I think because of years that we've saw everybody, grandma had a picture of white Jesus with the blue eyes and they being, yes. you know what I'm saying? And this and that, the, I, like one of my, follow you I, and that's why I love good times. One of the episodes on good times when they um, drew black Jesus and everybody was getting blessed because black Jesus was hanging up. It was like a good luck thing. <laughs> but, and then the mom was like, well, this is the Jesus I know. And this is Jesus I grew up on, but they was trying to make a statement just because they manipulated it and made it seem as that's who Jesus is, that's really not who he is. Right. The Bible says that when the Son of Man appears, um, that we shall be just like him, for we shall see him as he is. Yeah. So that means that he's going to look like everybody, pretty much. He's going to represent, and we're our job is to look like him as well. So he's right. going to represent all men. Christ died for everybody. He didn't just die for white people. He didn't just die for black people. He died for everybody. Marcus' so, mother said, I may get in trouble, but you've never seen a Caucasian booth at World of Nations. <laughs> exactly. Case closed. Exactly. And this is my thing with, with white people. Quit trying to make us feel stupid because, <laughs> or, or demonic because we don't want to agree with your views. Right. You know, people do it all the time. I've been getting, like, during the whole election process, and you, I'm surprised somebody like you that's a, a preacher of the gospel and a Christian with support. First of all, you don't even comment on nothing else I post when I do post stuff about the Lord and post scriptures and stuff. But all wow. of a sudden, you surprised because I'm a Christian and I post stuff like, you know, I say I don't support um, Donald Trump. No, I do not support Donald Trump, you know, and, and I'm not going to support him. So don't sit up here and try to make me feel like, oh, it's my godly duty to support him. No, I'm surprised you're a Christian and, and, and you support racism. I'm surprised you're a Christian and you could cry out against abortion, but you but when an innocent black man is being killed in the street, you quiet. You don't say anything. You have nothing to say. So don't 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 come at me with that. I don't care. And all this crap, well, he did a lot for the economy. He's riding off the wave of his predecessor. He didn't right. do anything. He should continue do, doing great things. Exactly. That's, that's what that's mm -hmm. the point of being a president. But um I yeah, but to dehumanize us for believing differently. Um, yeah. So how would you, like, if somebody, I mean, I guess I want to talk to the people. I watched, well, I didn't watch it, but I saw a clip of Paula White's service the other day, and I uh, see some brothers and sisters up there doing praise and worship and stuff, and I just want to know, like, I don't know, do y'all not, like, what is she saying lawyer. to... They just being know. loyal to her. Continue to make you feel comfortable. It's I know. loyalty, and they're just afraid to leave because they're afraid of what's going to happen if they leave. It is modern day religious slavery. Oh my! I'm God. sorry. I'm not sitting under no pastor that refused to speak out against racism and injustice and all of the other things that affect. Like I said, if you have a multicultural ministry, then you need to be able to address all of the issues concerning those cultures that's represented in your church but the fact that you want to only force your agenda because it benefits you that tells me number one you're not even in tune with uh what's going on and you really don't care about no other race but yours so no i'm not sitting under your ministry and a lot of these white pastors when these churches open back up 
please believe a lot of these black members will not be returning. That's what Pastor YPJ said. They're not. And I believe that. I'm starting to see it now. They're not coming back. They're not coming back because you have failed the people. You My have God. failed them. You built their ministry on their backs. You took their money. You took, it's, it's, like I said, it's just like slavery. And when it comes to speaking out against stuff that affects them, you have been silent. You and been silent. Uh, Todd said she had the same encounter from a white sister because the assumption is that if we are Christian, we should follow him. So Simon said, I remember a church here that had to represent on going through hell. I don't know what you mean, Sister Simon. But at the end, when the curtains opened up to the heavens was, it's all white people. I got up and walked out angry because there was no one with color on the stage. Exactly. And this is my thing. I don't know why. Okay, I didn't agree with a lot that George President, former President George Bush did. But I don't remember this many evangelicals standing behind President Bush. No. Because I feel like he was up in a big way. Who, who was the one who actually sent us into war? That was President Bush. And he's yeah, a Republican. Nation, but I don't, nobody like really stood up against. Not as much as they've done with Donald Trump. Wow. Like, And President Bush was a Republican. He did an eight-year term. Yes. I don't remember a lot of evangelicals supporting him. Like they this. lost a lot of their family members over there fighting in that war. Fighting in that war. And nobody, so, you're right. Yeah. But they standing behind this guy. They, but the Bible says we ought to pray for our leaders. Y'all ain't praying for no other leaders. I'm praying y'all ain't for them. Like right? Y'all ain't praying for them. Y'all ain't praying. And think about it. Every time these white evangelicals pray that God do something in Trump's favor, he does it in the favor of the, of the next person, of President elect Biden. So that tells you right there, like it's come on, let it go. <laughs> let it oh, go. So Simon said it was a play where you walk through the stages of hell. I've been to a church like that too. Now I'm trying to think. Oh, I know what she's talking about. I know she's talking say, about. I guess at the point, oh, is it like out in like this? It's way out, but I think I went to that too. I was pregnant with Makai and it was a heaven scene. And I didn't notice that until now that it was a heaven mm-hmm. scene. Everybody was in white robes and nobody was black. Ain't nobody singing, I shall wear a crown. They ain't doing that. They That's don't care about y'all wearing a crown. It's sad. And, and it's so sad because, it, like I said, it's like y'all are trying to make, demonize every other cult. It's, it's like you're being bold in it. Like, this is how we do it. And this is how everybody need to do it because this is how we worship. This is who we support. This is what we stand for. I, like, how, how would somebody know? Because I don't, when I was looking at the video today, I was like, you know, at first the pastor told the people to just say yes. And that means you agree. So they should have known like that should, it was going to be some foolishness. If, at least tell me what I'm going to say yes to. I'm getting ready to pray for healing. And I just want you guys to touch an agreement. Like he didn't even, it doesn't seem like from the clip that he preferenced his prayer with anybody, with anything. And so he just started praying and praying the curses. And they were just saying, yes, yes, yes. So what like advice would you give somebody who may have been in that altar at that altar and don't know that they are complying with witchcraft? I think the best advice that I could give somebody this in this time that we're in right now, it is so critical to the point where it's life or death that you have to have your own relationship with God. You have to. You have to know God for yourself. You cannot go by what people are saying. You cannot go by what you see other people doing. You have to have a solid relationship with God. I'm not talking about when I got my grandma that could pray for me or my uncle pray for me. No, 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 no. You must have your own relationship with God and allow the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost to lead you and give you that discernment to detect what is good and what is not good. The Bible talks about, Jesus said, he said in the last days that we're gonna hear about false teachings and and false preachings. He said, but we are, but we'll be able to try the spirit. And what helps us try the spirit is relationship with God or relationship with his word. We'll be able to determine what's going on. Now, to a person that may be a baby in Christ, if they saw that video, they would be like, oh, okay, they just praying. 
But to somebody that's been walking with the Lord for a while, we understand that that was not God and that was a witchcraft because you don't wish ill as a Christian. I don't care how bad a person is to you or how upset you are. You don't use Christ's name to wish ill on people. God ain't gonna honor that. So we have to encourage people. If you do not have a true relationship with God, I'm not talking about going to church. I'm not talking about paying tithe. I'm not talking about doing this and doing that. But I mean, you must have a solid relationship with Jesus Christ for yourself. If you do not have a relationship with God in this season, you are going to be so lost because the very pillars that we're dependent on in the faith, they are letting us down day by day. And a lot of these pastors are no longer pastoring. They're just preaching on Sundays. It's like you pretty much got to fend for yourself. And again, uh, you uh, have to have your own. I'm serious. It, it, they're no longer pastoring. They're just preaching. And throughout the week, you got to fend for yourself. You got to do family. what you got to do. They scatter in the flock. And you got to, I think what's keeping me spiritually sane right now is the fact that I have a solid relationship with God. Regardless of what people say, I'm still saved. <laughs> but I do. I have a solid relationship with God. And and I think and I believe that's the only reason I'm still holding on. But yeah. had I would have gotten saved a year ago, I wouldn't have made it. Yeah. I know I wouldn't have made it. Yeah. I wouldn't have made it. That's so true. I was just telling somebody the other day, like <sighs> y'all ain't gonna like it, but you're almost you're not. This is why I really want people to be mindful when they want these titles and stuff. Um, when you say you are a pastor, that means you shepherd a, a flock, you tend to this particular flock. And a lot of pastors are, like you said, only preaching on Sunday. And then the sheep are left trying to figure their way around until it's Sunday again. And pastor has another word via Zoom, Facebook Live or whatever. And that's not I, relevant. And I've seen some people complain that, well, we're in a pandemic, pastors shouldn't have to reach out to everybody or, and then this makes me feel like we should have had some systems or some ministries in place, not for like that, like not that this would happen again, but that would keep us connected. This is why the purpose of small groups is great, you know, um, ministry, like Phone, phone trees just have it. It's churches now. Mm-hmm. Who don't have no? Who does not have? Who doesn't have a way to get in contact with everybody who is supposed to be a member at their church? And That's so true. you're right. A lot of sheep are being scattered right now because they don't have a connection anymore. You know, I was thinking about um, the mothers of the church, but what about the mothers who don't use Facebook, who don't go on Instagram? How are they being tended to, you know, during this time? All they do is like, you know, they talk on the phone or whatever. Mm. And I don't know. I, I don't know how we could be so spiritual and so tuned in with the Lord about everything else when it comes to this building fund, what we're going to go next with our vision in God. But we didn't see a need to find, to be connected and to stay connected. Should there be a time where we, couldn't physically come to the house of God. I don't, I don't. What, say what that. that's showing me is that you did not, you never had a heart for the people. You always, you just had a passion to fulfill your vision. So to just teach and to preach, but it really didn't matter if we if were people doing- come or not. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's going to make you look like you're going to look successful because you got this building and you got this and you got all of that. But little do you know, when this pandemic is over, it's going to really show you how God feels about your ministry. Yeah, Todd said the youth too yeah. in most churches. And that is so youth true. are not connected. They're not connected. And and like I said, it just shows that a lot of these leaders do not have you you have not had a heart for the people right. in a while. I, I'm not saying you got to call all your members every day and stuff like that, but you know what harm is it for you? Hey y'all. I'm doing a, a prayer service. And if you, I know we got a limited thing, but we're here, we're just praying, send your prayer requests or, you know, have small groups and things like that set up. You know, if you're a youth pastor, you still need to be reaching out to your youth. Yes, the parents are getting it, but who's reaching out to the youth? Who's reaching out to the young adults? I mean, you have nothing in place, but yet you want to get a check every two weeks. And I've seen a lot of organizations um, yep. start at the beginning of 2020. 
and I don't hear nothing about them anymore because they haven't found a way. You know, we got to stop starting stuff because it looks good because it gives us the title of CEO or the title of founder or president. And then we don't do what's necessary in times like these. Like if people did not need a, like we needed a word before. But you mean to tell me now we're in a pandemic. We are, we just witnessed domestic terrorism the other day. Um, that we have, nobody spoke out against. No, we have no 46 minus one seeming like he's refusing to leave the office or we don't really know how the next couple of days are going to go. You mean to tell me you don't find like this is a time where we really needed to connect as a body? Like, it's a lot of churches didn't do the 2021 beginning fast uh, prayer. Like, I don't know, Stan. I really don't know. Oh, I don't want to say that. I just don't know how you could still, why you would still want to consider yourself to be a pastor if you have not tended to your sheep during this time. Because you get a check. <laughs> it's a job. It's not a calling at that point. It's no longer, for some people, it's no longer a calling. It is now a job. The same reason why we go to work a lot and many of us don't want to go to work. And we do the bare minimum, just get our job done so we can keep our check every two weeks. Right. And that's what it's looking like with pastoring. You know, we're just doing the bare minimum just to keep an income coming in. We don't, we, we've we lost passion for people. We lost the heart for the people. We don't even, even some of the messages that I'm watching online, we're still not even making an appeal for people to accept Christ as their Savior. Because you don't, it's not a concern of yours. It's not a big deal to you at this point. But yet you expect people to come back and sit under your tutelage. That's why I said, I keep saying this boldly. People can criticize me for saying it. I am not, at, from what I'm seeing and from what I've been observing these past almost a year, I'm like, the Lord has shut, these, that church, shut the church down for almost a year and we still ain't got it. <laughs> still ain't got the point. <laughs> we still don't and see it. <laughs> Help us, God. And yet God is raising up folk that we least expect to take over churches. And we wonder, well, how to where they got a church? The God got to, God got to put somebody in place because the ones in place ain't doing it. The sheep need a shepherd. They don't need a, a, a preacher. They don't need a manager. They don't need somebody to lord over them. They need a shepherd yeah. to tend to them. And if you're that obligated to where you cannot tend to your sheep, then just step down and allow somebody to shepherd your flock, shepherd that flock, and you go do what your other obligations are. That's just what it is at this point. Either you're going to shepherd or you're going to stop. So you think one thing about it, it, you, gonna, you think we're going to make it a, actually make it to a year? Oh, we're definitely going to make it to a year. It's going to be a, it's going to be probably over a year to where we go back to these churches. And it's so sad because I'm, like I say, I'm looking online and these churches are doing the exact same thing they did that called that I believe probably that the Lord allowed to cause the pandemic. <laughs> Y'all ain't got it yet. Y'all ain't get the picture yet. And it's so sad. Still having worship the same, still getting up doing your same order of services, still preaching what you want to preach. You, you have not preached anything relevant to what's going on because you're pushing your agenda. You're not in tune to the spirit of God. You mean to tell me God is not concerned about the pandemic? God is not concerned about the racism? People are depressed. People are sick. People are dying. People are hopeless people got all of this going on and you are not you you cannot say anything about it people are losing hope in pastors because of scandals and all kind of situation and it's nothing that the lord can give you to keep the saints encouraged to remind the saints of the hope come on y'all and i think i said this last week when it's i did on. the prayer challenge in those prayer requests stanley man it just broke my heart it was it's a lot of most of the women certain sometimes some of them serve in some capacity in church mm -hmm. some of them regular regularly attend service but have been battling with their mental health during this time mm -hmm. loss of employment battling in their marriages during this time um man it just it broke my heart grieving you know losing loved ones loss of plans loss of um opportunities they thought they were going to have exactly it just, it just broke my heart to see how heavy the prayer requests were at the beginning of the year. And I just, I guess I kind of thought that it would be more about purpose and this new year bringing new mercy, new grace, new opportunities. But it was just so, it was a heavy um, mm -hmm. prayer request. People really just 
you know, needing discernment, second guessing, you know, what they've heard, needing um, deliverance from the enemy, how he, they say he just was, you know, been speaking loudly even more now because, mm -hmm. you know, we haven't been able to fellowship with one another and they just being attacked at home on their job. And it's just like, and we just, church is just doing the same thing. And, it, and it's so sad because like, even with the situation with Paula White, when we made that, when everybody, when we all were talking about Paula Wayne and how she was praying, praying about the election and had that press service. And then I looked at the video again that, that I posted today with the pastor from the service praying and cursing people because of the election. My thing is, if you all could have used that same energy of prayer to pray for the needs of people, like how many people in your congregation are sick? How many people in your congregation need a breakthrough? How many people in your con congregation needs to be delivered from some type of strongholds and stuff like that? I mean, even with Paula White, I'm like, you went into straight warfare. I ain't, I have not heard her pray on that level in the years. You know, and, and the, that video. Yeah, and my thing is, you know, went to straight warfare, decreeing and declaring and chanting and rock buying and hidi sign and all of that. And I'm like, what if you would have used that same fervency of prayer for yeah. people that actually needed the prayer? Like, okay, it, it's just an election. It's just an election. There are going to be seasons where we get presidents that we like, and there are going to be seasons that we don't get presidents that we get presidents we don't like. It's at the end of the day, it's just an election, election, and God, but God forever reigns on the throne. Yeah. yeah. So if God's on the throne, we're going to come on. Like that, that's crazy. You could have like that man had an altar full of people sure to did. pray against folk that voted against Trump. The altar should have been full of people that asked for salvation and asked for healing and asked for, that's yeah. what the altar should have been. Yeah. But instead you, you created an altar, which is so satanic. You created an altar in the house of the Lord to push a personal agenda and to curse people because they didn't agree with what you wanted to happen. How demonic is that? Todd said, um, going back to the churches, um, that's because for half of the year, the focus for churches was to go back into the building. <laughs> That's true. Or how to keep having the church in the building. They are satisfied with the few that come until they miss the big, bigger picture. That is so true. We did spend a lot of time in, in our ministries trying to figure out how to convert our services online instead of giving us a word for the time. Marcus Smothers exactly. said, when the church building opens back up, do you think pastors will stop streaming services and force members back in the building? I I, I totally believe that they will. Yeah. They're gonna it's, it, it, it's gonna be yeah. it's gonna be a saving in income. I mean in uh, expenses. I think they'll see it like that. They ought to be here. No, they, it ain't that. that. It'll just be a manipulative for some people, it'll just be a manipulative way to get people to come back because some people can't preach unless there's a crowd. Well, you should just be streaming all alone. That's what all the big churches do anyway. You so. should have been doing it all alone. But then it's this is the thing. Rich. When you're streaming, you risk the fact that you won't get the same attendance that you got prior to. So some people preach based on what type of crowd, the amount of crowd, people that are there. So uh, I do believe that they they that they are going to stop streaming live um, with that. But to be honest, the times that we live in, you cannot go back to church as normal. You sure can't. Not you if you're trying to like, survive and move forward. <laughs> you're not going to make it. So that's what I'm saying. If you're going to stop, if you're going to stop the streaming, then okay, let's just make sure that the glory of God is there. Let's switch it up. Let's just allow the Holy Spirit to kind of just flow through. Like we, we always say that God have your way in this place and let your glory show up in this place. And, but we won't let them. We won't let them. <laughs> we still pushing our agenda. So yeah. that's my thing. That's my belief. I do believe that there are going to be some that will remain virtual. And that will remain online, but I do believe that a lot of them will stop it because they want people to physically come back to church. And this is the thing: the Bible tells us to preach the word in season, preach it out of season. Yeah. Your message or the or the passion of your message should not be determined based on how many people show up. Because right. you got preachers that do that. If it's three people there, we we just gonna talk. But if it's a thousand people there, we gonna tear the house down. No, you give God a hundred percent regardless. Yeah. And they may come. Just saying. That's all stuff. That's all I'm saying. Right right it's a lot. It's a lot of responsibility in their pool pit. 
and you rush in to get the title of pastor. I'm telling you, it, it's not, it's not a, it's not a life of glamour. It's not right. a life of, you know, fame. It's really there are some that has made it into that, but it's really a life of sacrifice and yeah. a lot. People tell me all the time, why don't you start a church? Why don't you start pastoring? I don't, first of all, number one, my patience ain't there yet with people. And number two, it's a lot of sacrifice. And I have to really ask myself, is that something that I'm willing to sacrifice to achieve? Like, am I ready to make those type of sacrifices? Especially now being that I'm single, you know, it's going to take a lot of sacrifices for me. So I'd rather not do it than get up there and play with God and do it just to get a job done or to look great. That's just me. So right. I'm just saying, you know, but it's, we, we just got to do better. But I, I do want us, as, I do want the black church and I hate to say white church, black church, but I do want those that are colored, <laughs> blacks, <laughs> Hispanics, Asians. We got to step our People game on this. PO, POC. Yeah, yeah, POC. I want all minority Christian believers to step our games up with our theologies, we have to start educating ourselves more yes. with the word of God because when when things turn around and we start seeing a, a, a harvest of folk that's coming into us, we got to be on top of our game as well with our word. We cannot keep getting up with these mom and pop messages, you know, just to get them happy. No, we need to get in our word. We have yeah. to study more. We got to start getting an understanding where we got to quit preaching out of ignorance. You know, there's so many free resources, especially now that you can actually get an understanding of God's word because when these people come, they we need to be able to give them something. And right. not only do you need to be able to minister to the poor, you need to be able to minister to the rich as well. Right. You can't, all that, all that ghetto hip hop slang stuff, you're gonna have to change that up a little bit, especially when you're in your forties. Grow up! So I'm just saying, grow up. That's so true, grow Stanley. Up. We think about, uh, I think about that scripture that says we're perishing for a lack of knowledge. And I don't know what people usually think about when they hear that, but lately, like at the beginning of the pandemic, it was, for me, it was lack of biblical knowledge. So just a little shameless plug. I created a journal to try to help people study the Bible where I talk about hermeneutics and give you like a Bible study pattern. I was never taught how to study the Bible. So it was not interesting to me. Um, like if I had to preach then I'll study but I didn't have a way to make it like a a lifestyle and mm -hmm. this time that we we're in requires a lifestyle of studying the bible so that you can so that you can compare what people saying to you um exactly. so I'd be like the people who was up there amen and the curses from the altar you, if you have some biblical knowledge you will at least be able to mm, let me see compare that against what happened in the in the word to see if I could find evidence to see if this is right or not. We so do. I don't we got to step. Yeah. Because what step you up. don't it's, know yeah. can kill you. Yeah. Um, Everybody, like, like all that talking about haters and God going to make me great in front of my haters and all that foolishness and don't wear, you know, stunting on my haters and all that. Like that, that, let that mess go. That season is over. We got bigger problems than, than talking about who hating on you and who ain't hating on you. We got folk dying and going to hell. So we really need to step our game up when it comes to knowing the word of God, acknowledging the word of God. Like I said, you get so many resources out there. You got Lisa Fields with Jude 3 Project yeah. uh, as well. Derek She's somebody Daniels. here in the city. Derek Daniels. Daniels has Everyday Seminary. Uh, I'm in yeah. that and I really enjoy that. Yeah, it's a lot of resources out there. I, I even started going back to school, you know, and taking up, you know, things so I can educate myself and not only be able to just preach you know what I'm reading, but to actually know it. Like, honestly, since I've been in school now, I know how to really study the word from a different perspective. Yeah. Not just to get a hot message out of it, but to actually study it to where it can impact my life. And once it impact my life, I can share it with others. Right. My pastor Bishop Paul told me something one time. He said, you don't study to preach, you study to live, but, and you preach out of what you live, but you don't study just to preach. You study because you got to live. That's right. So, and we got to get back to that. So, I do want to encourage us. I know it's a lot of young preachers coming up that's younger than me that's coming up. And we, you know, we want to get all a hot message and get our, you know, five minutes of fame, but you got to come with it now because people have heard all that lingo. God going to turn it around. God going to do this. God going to do it. We done heard all them prophecies last year and half of them, <laughs> the 
eighty percent of them was off. So you, you know, you got to come year. with it. Yeah, we ain't hear them. <laughs> I guess everybody was but, like, "Won't give me." Yo, we got to step our game up. We have to get educated, and we cannot be dependent on well, this this person said this, and I was reading a book about it. You can't even go by some of the books that you read now. You got to know the word. It's just everything no going down, but the word. But the word. But the word. Yeah. You can't no even trust no people delivering the word, uh, as we saw okay. in the video from today. Because okay. people that. now, man, they're manipulating, and I hate, let me tell you something. My relationship with God has been growing to the point where I can, I can, I can sense manipulation with scriptures. And when people get up to preach, I can be like, okay, yeah, they're trying to manipulate this. So I'm telling y'all, we have to step, Black people, we got to step our games up. We got to quit being so quick to shout. And, and speak in tongues, get in the word. And, and I believe in dancing. I believe in speaking in tongues, but I don't, I don't speak in tongues in ignorance and I don't shout in ignorance. <laughs> I, I shout off the knowledge that God has given me through his word. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I ain't that, got no witness. I done lost the church. Amen. Yeah. So close all these virtual revivals, all these birthdays, virtual birthday services y'all doing, all these virtual things. Shut this stuff down and do a Bible study and help your church get in the word Yeah, and get solid. If you're going to do Bible study, do Bible study. Right. <laughs> you Bible study let them ask Bible. questions. You know what I'm saying? Let them, let them send questions and, and talk about stuff. Let's, let's talk about the Bible. Let's educate these people on the word. Word. Child, the Bible study that I've yeah. been in probably since the pandemic is blessing me. We still on Revelation. It is blessing me. I get to ask, oh. answer. I get to ask questions, uh, hard questions, stuff I never understood before. It is mm -hmm. blessing me, and like Stanley said, it does make you a better steward of the word. And since the Lord has given us a platform, we ought to know better because people come to us with answers. I mean, with questions, uh, and so we ought to be able to give an answer. That's a, a, that's what the Bible tells us, mm -hmm. uh, and so we ought to not be ignorant. Because we get to use ignorance as an excuse. I know Bishop Paul talked about one time. Um, so we're not always like some people are just indifferent. They don't care. They don't care to know. And you should, if you're going to be the one presenting the word of God to somebody, you should make, you should want to yeah, preach correctly, um, and in a way where yeah. people, you know, understand and make it palatable for people to be able to chew on it, live by it. You should want to. Um, and if you don't, you I need you just not sit. I need you to give up on the preaching. I need you to sit you down. Just give it up. And, and that's the thing, people. They and then it's and then like they so quick to prophesy, but but can't even study to preach. But you so quick to prophesy. And you know, and, and, and that yeah, don't make sense because you do like it's like you want to have the gift without the knowledge behind it. That's like people who want to get the degree but don't want to actually go to school. Um, yeah, God don't give out honorary degrees. Yeah. You have to earn it. Like everything but, you need to know about the gift of prophecy is in the. Mm -hmm. I think she, I think she left us. Just being able to invest in that knowledge. Like when people come to me now, I, it comes so naturally now, it comes so easily. It's, and that's how the Lord wants it to be. Like he wants to be able to use us, but we got to have some knowledge so that we can be a conduit for his power so that people can come to us and we can be able to give an answer, be able to help. What's the that's use true. of having your gifts? You don't know how to operate in them. But that's what the Bible says, study to show that self-approval, work that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word in truth. And so many people that are ashamed because they have not studied to show themselves approved. And yeah. you getting up there, we like, what? What you talking about? That's not what that says. <laughs> and you you can't get away with that country preaching no more because these people are going to school now. They educated, they can read. So you can't get up there. Oh, and that's God. what my grandma said. No, no. Step your game up. And I'm gonna say this too: with everybody being shut down and stuff like that. There should, there should have been a strong anointing amongst the body of Christ right now because we ain't doing nothing but praying. I mean, we should be praying more. We should be seeking God more. We're in our homes. We're quarantined. We're fasting. There should be such a glory that rests upon the church right now like never before. 
But we still pushing our agendas, even in this. I'm telling you, God it's is like, not going to lift what? this pandemic until we get it. What does God have to do? Yeah, I think he's just going to start burning these buildings up. That's probably what's going to be the that next That reminds thing. me, um, <laughs> there's a, uh, I seen somebody say this, so that I want to be politically correct. There's a prophetic voice that I um, that I trust. And the word has been to make sure we anoint our home. So I was making sure I tell my friend um, because of whatever is coming next. And I always try to make that a practice when I start the new year to make sure I anoint my home, my door frames, my entry points. Mm -hmm. And Marcus and uh, Major was sleeping. I went and hit, put some oil on their forehead. I just believe in laying the hands and uh, using mm -hmm. oil. So that whatever is coming next, that we be prepared spiritually as well as um physically um because this flesh child it get out of control it make you want to say some stuff it get weak real quickly but like bishop mm -hmm. hall has taught us we need that our spirit is going to be what needs to remind our flesh of what we're what we already know and so we need mm -hmm. that spirit man to be stronger because we don't know we what's do. coming next y'all i i have never lived in a time where i've seen somebody storm the capitol I'm praying now for inauguration day. I really want them to just do it on Zoom. I don't even want us to do that's what I said. A real inauguration. But um we just don't, yeah. you know, just don't know what's gonna happen next. So just be mindful, be prayerful. Not don't be afraid, but just be be mindful that the enemy um has come to kill, steal, and destroy. And if you saw the video, you know there there are people like that man who are cursing people because of what has happened and you're doing nothing but infusing you all of this chaos that's going on yeah. so we got to be wise we got to step our games up like i said we we, we just got to do better we really got to do better because we are so far behind time yeah don't be perishing because of your own ignorance you know exactly it's one, it's one thing if pastor didn't know when and when he taught that because he didn't understand it but don't keep living off that. Go back and study. And I'm going to say this before we go. I'm not saying that all pastors that are white are racist. It's because there are some that have spoken out against it. Yeah. And they have, you know, have done things for communities as well. However, I want to just advise you all to use discernment and um, use discernment when you hear it. Because there are a lot of black pastors that support him that supported um, President Trump. Lord Jesus, I said President Trump. That's oh God. So but anyway, that just hurt it when I had to say that. But there's mm -hmm. some black people that supported, you know, Donald Trump as well. So what I'm saying is ask the Lord, and this is something that I asked God starting last year. I asked him the same thing this year. Reveal the motives of those that I'm connected to. Reveal them, Lord. Reveal the motives of those that I'm connected to so I'll know how to handle them. Yeah. So and that's what I'm saying. So we got to ask God with our relationships, with connections. Lord, show me the motives of this person. Show me the heart so I'll know how to handle them. And that's what we need to do this year because it's going to get crazy. I don't think this whole chaos situation is going to die because President Biden is coming into office. I think it's actually going to intensify because people are mad. People are upset. And um, But I do believe that for minorities, and I'm not claiming to be no prophet or anything like that, but I do believe that this will be a, a good season for minorities. I do believe that. I, I can I can see this really, I can see things kind of favoring us. But I was in prayer and the Lord told me this. He said, don't worry about what's going on in the world. That has nothing to do with us. That's God is letting the world be the world. Yeah. And those that are of the world, he's letting them be of the world. But the saints will be sustained. We're going to be all right. Yes, we so, will. Yep. He who so has kept us trouble. is keeping us. Yet, he's yet keeping us. Yes, he's, he and I thought about it. I said, God, I thank you. In a, in a year where people lost their jobs, I was still employed. I was still able to pay my bills. I was still, God sustained us. A lot. Yeah, we saw a lot of death and things like that, but the Lord has been sustaining us. Yes, he so, um, so I really want to encourage us. The Lord told me that. I was in prayer and the Lord told me that. The saints will be sustained. So yes, let the world be the world and let God be God. Yep. That's good. Oh, you like, we had a mother. She gone. She died. Mother Orange. She used to do yep. that. Wish that. Oh, uh, uh, sister Hall, mama like that too. 
I, I oh, yeah, I like sitting by my deal. Yeah, uh-huh, my deal. Sat yeah. by her before, I'd be like, ooh! Yep. <laughs> yeah, I, I love her them balls. <laughs> yeah, she go in. Yeah. She's boring! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, it don't take deal. much. Yeah, it don't take much. Yeah, it don't take much. <laughs> yeah, it's goodness. But yeah, we used to have money. Mother always used to do it. You sit by her at church. She didn't have it. Don't sit back. She gonna show hit you. Like, oh. But yeah, y'all. So yeah, man, we gonna be the Saints gonna be all right. So that's why I say just take this time, educate yourself, step your prayer time. Lately, the Lord has been waking me up at five in the morning for, for prayer. I'm not even a morning person, and I know it's the Holy Ghost because I don't get up at five in the morning. But lately, the Lord just been waking me up, and I just been praying and. In the seating for the Saints, I really have. You know, I laugh and joke a lot. I clown a lot. But when it comes to stuff like that, I'm, I'm very serious. But um, the Lord has been waking me up. So I don't know what God is preparing us for. But lately, I've just been up praying and, and getting myself together and getting more into my word as well. So we just got to take advantage of this time that God has given us to share. Yeah. God wants us to use this moment for us to get to know him. A lot of us got to know the church. We got to know the pastor. And clearly, we can we see it. We can't trust in them. My so God. God wants us to get to know Him in this season. So let's get to know Him. Yeah, get to know Him. That's good. That's a commission mm. song. It's so good to know. They stole it from the wires. But it's okay, though. Such a hater. Thank y'all so much for joining us. You have anything yeah, you want to say? For no, not really. Oh, uh, y'all be on the lookout. If you're on Clubhouse, we we might be doing a real room clubhouse. So um we'll let y'all know. But oh that's I don't know. to me, Saints. Okay. Yeah, I don't that's know. That's out here handing might. out assignments. Yeah, we might be doing it. Now I honestly I've been on Clubhouse and it's 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 very interesting. I mean, you're meeting people, you're able to minister. I've been able to minister to people I would have never met here. And young people have questions. They have questions. They have issues. We don't had yeah. to pray for folk. That are, one girl got on there. She was talking about, you know, she had got into a bad relationship. I think it had something to do with rape or whatever, like mental illness, all of that. But I've also been able to connect with other 